Recap, I also mentioned that this equation might not be in motion last time. It relates the uh, density rho to the specific weight gamma. The g is the local acceleration of gravity. And in case you see these terms, if you see a word absolute viscosity, dynamic viscosity, or just plain old viscosity, it means the same thing. But if you see kinematic viscosity, that's new. Those two are different, and the equations in your notes from last time on that. But just nomenclature-wise, those three, some books use absolute viscosity, some books use dynamic, and other ones just say viscosity is viscosity. Okay, uh, we finished chapter one, and just uh, a little heads up. At the end of every chapter, there is a chapter summary and a study guide. So there's kind of all the things you should have been aware of when you cover chapter one, and especially there are all the important equations out of chapter one. So if you're putting together an equation sheet for an exam, you might look at the end of every chapter at those important equations and make sure they're on your equation sheet, because you will be allowed one equation sheet for the exam, front and back, a piece of paper, eight down by 11. So, Every chapter has a summary at the end, and it's kind of worthwhile reading. All right, we finished up chapter one on Monday, and now we're starting chapter uh, two, which is fluid static. We go back and pick up the property, the pressure of uh, fluid. And now we're gonna see how pressure varies with different scenarios. To do that, we start out and look at a little element of fluid, a little differential element of fluid. This is a pressure force on this surface. Don't forget, pressure is a normal stress. So pressure always acts perpendicular to the surface. So pressure force acting pressure on a surface. That creates a force. A pressure is a force over area. Delta Z, here's the coordinate system. Delta Z, vertical, delta Y on the uh, Y axis. We're assuming into the, into the paper one, unit depth into the paper. Let's put down the other pressures on here. We'll call this pressure the uh, pressure pointing in the Y direction. We'll call this pressure the pressure pointing in the Z direction. <laughs> And this angle is theta. I think that's it. Well, this distance here we call delta S. Hypotenuse, delta S. And we're going to write a summation of the forces now. And we'll start off in the y direction. Uh, what we're going to assume that um, this is static fluid, no acceleration, so zero. Y direction, PY, a component of P. This is angle theta up here. So we have PY pointing in the positive Y direction, positive sign. The area that that pressure acts on is the left-hand side. It's delta Z times 1. Into the blackboard, 1 in this direction. The component of P acting that way, negative. Surface area, delta S times 1 equals 0. We can go ahead and change this now. We notice that, um, that our 
delta z equal delta s sine theta. Delta y down here equal delta s cosine theta. We can replace um, up here at delta z. So I'll replace that. So py delta z right here. Times one, let's drop the one out. Minus P delta S. Uh, this is the uh, force of this guy up here. Yeah, delta S sine theta, sine theta times P. Okay, this guy up here, he has the, uh, I need the sine theta up here, so I'll add that. This component right here is P sine theta. Put the sine theta up there. Okay, um, cancels, 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 cancels. P Y equal P. Next. Summation of the forces, z direction, zero. I'm not going to go through all the gory details. The same thing, same thing. Go ahead and do that, just like up here. And you end up with P Z equals P. <coughs> Conclusion. So P equals P Y equals P Z. That means that, okay, if you measure the pressure this way, or this way, or this way, at a point, at a point, this is a very small element, at a point in the fluid, you get the same value for pressure. Of course, that's relatively common sense, but that's the mathematical proof of it. If somebody says, what's the pressure at my fingertip right here in this room, the pressure of the air? What if I take my pressure transducer and point it that way? Okay, I get 14.7. This way, 14.7. This way, 14.7. At an angle, 14.7. It doesn't matter which way you're looking at the pressure at a point now, it's the same. Conclusion, pressure is the same from any direction at a point. Kind of like, you know, well, I knew that. Yeah, I know, but you got to show it efficiently. Okay? So, there's the first one. And that was called Pascal's Law. But now we take a little different approach. We uh, draw a new fluid element. And this again is a fluid element, it's dz, dy, same coordinate system, x, y, and z, same coordinate system, x, y, and z. And we're going to look at the forces on this element. There's the weight. There's a pressure force on the left side, pressure force on the right side. Pressure force on the top, pressure force on the bottom. All the arrows point in because, of course, pressure is a compressive stress. They all push on the fluid element. Okay, let's label some of these pressures. The pressure right in the middle we call P. Pressure on the left. Now here's delta y between my fingers. How far from the center is the left hand face? Delta y over 2. So the pressure right here is P minus dp dy 
times the distance you move, dy over 2, multiplied by dz. Don't forget, pressure times area is a force. That pressure acts on an area, dz times 1. 1 is the depth of that element into the board. We're going to assume unity depth into the board. Okay, take the pressure on the right. We go to the right. This was a minus sign. We go to the right. This is a plus sign. D plus dp. Dy times dy over 2 multiplied by dz. Okay, we play the same game at the bottom. From the middle to the bottom, you go down minus P minus D, P, D, Z. How far down did you go? D, Z over 2. What's the area of that pressure acts on? DY times 1. At the top, P plus, you're expanding pressure in like the Taylor series, and we're neglecting the higher order terms, so we just have the first differential, dp dy times dy over 2, because we know what's going to happen in the end. As we let dx and dy go to zero, the higher order terms disappear faster than the lower order terms do, so we know in advance we can neglect those terms. P plus partial P with respect to V by DZ over 2, DY. Why are some partials and some ordinary? Pressure is a function of X, Y, and Z. Therefore, when you take the derivative, it's the partial derivative. The area is DY times 1, DZ times 1. That's why there's some Ds and some partials. Okay, so now we do the same game, okay. This can be a fluid at rest or with a constant acceleration. So let's um, do uh, summation of forces in the y direction, zero. We're calling positive y that way. Okay, take my first term, left-hand side, positive direction, P minus minus DZ leaves the acceleration in here, a y, but then later on he says uh, a y is zero, so we'll just leave the acceleration out. We'll assume it's a static fluid. Okay, in the, in the bracket, plus p. In the bracket, minus p. Gone, gone. d y over 2, add it to minus sign. Minus sign dy over 2. Okay, so we have our partial p with respect to y. <coughs> dy dz equals 0. Divide through by minus dy dz. And we get partial p with respect to y equals 0. In the x direction, very similar. I, I didn't show it here, okay? Because it's three dimensional. But x direction is this way. So you do it the x direction, you find out that partial p with respect to x equal zero. That tells me, now, if I 
partial a variable with respect to a second variable zero, that tells me that variable is not a function of that variable. Pressure does not vary in a still fluid in the y direction. Pressure does not vary in a still fluid in the x direction. Where are the x and y directions? Right here. Here it is. Here's the y direction. Pressure not varying. Here it is. Pressure not varying in the x direction. Conclusion. Oh, pressure must not vary on horizontal planes. Right. Okay. Conclusion. down two feet below the surface. Two feet below the surface. There's a pressure there. The pool's got a flat bottom. You walk from one end of the pool to the other with a pressure gauge in your hand. Two feet below the surface. It's not changing. It's still not changing. Well, you know, let's have some intuition. Yeah, right. No, it's still not changing. Then go, go backwards. It's still not changing. Right. We know that. This is the official engineering mathematical proof of what we have this intuition for. Okay, pressure does not vary this way and this way in this room. The pressure does not vary this way and this way. Is it a static situation? Pretty much so. It's kind of warm. You know, not, not much moving off those vents right now. I'll tell you a funny story from today. This morning, this room is pretty warm. And uh, so because I had an instructor ask me if it was warm for us, and it was last time. The door was open even for a while. We had to close the door. And so we called up facilities who were in charge of the HVAC, and we said, did you check room 335? Because it seems kind of warm in there. That, that wall faces the, faces the south, and right now it's getting beat by the sun this time of year. This room is hot. And they said, okay, we'll have a look, we'll send over a guy to have him check the, the, the temperature in the room. So I don't know where it is. It's a little bit there. Let's see. Yeah, it's on the wall over there. There it is. Well, anyway, they, they check it remotely. You know, they don't, they don't come, they, they got remote over, over at facilities. They can check it remotely. And the guy called back and said, I, I have to apologize. He said, um, we, we checked your room temperature. And he said, because they change it. You can't change a the thermostat. They change it themselves over there. He said, um, we took the temperature, and right now, this was at noon, right now it's 76.4 degrees. It's kind of warm, 76.4. And he says, we have a set of rules we have to follow. And he says, these rules say that unless the temperature exceeds now 77 or 76.4, we can't change anything over there. We're within six tenths of a degree Fahrenheit from you know, getting this room cooled out. So he said, okay, we'll live with it. I said, come back and check it about 4 o'clock or 5 o'clock. It'll probably be worse then because the sun is going to stay there all day on that wall. So anyway, if it's warm in here for you, I apologize. But uh, we're six-tenths of a degree um, on the wrong side of the change of the temperature. <laughs> Everybody, you know, start exercising. We'll get about 77.1. And then we we'll change that temperature over there. Let's go breathe on and you can't open the door because then all you hear is the hallway noise from the elevator, so you're kind of stuck in your hard spot in a rock. Okay, back to here. Uh, so you can see that the temperature is not very in the, in the horizontal planes. Well, now we know about the vertical direction. We know that something happens bad. The pressure goes up as you go down in your swimming pool. Okay, so now we tackle that one. That's the Z. Let's leave him up there. Might need him later. All right. So let's do the same thing, but now we're going to go in the uh, z direction. Uh, summation of forces z direction equals zero. We'll call upward forces positive. Okay. At the bottom, force 20 now. P, 
minus the B D Z. How far up do you go? D Z over 2. What's the area? Delta Y times 1, or D Y times 1. Top surface, pressure pointing downward. Force is downward, minus P. Now we go up, so P plus partial P with respect to Z. Uh -oh. Now we got to wait, wait. Down, negative. Wait, okay. Gamma times the volume. Gamma times the volume is the weight. The volume, dz or dy, dz times 1. One into the blackboard, unity. Don't use rho, don't use density. Why not? Because density is mass per volume. Gamma is weight per volume. Weight is a force, mass is not a force. Okay, start to get rid of things here. Uh, P minus P, gone. DY, DZ, DY, DZ, DY, DZ. Gone, gone, gone. Plus a half DP, DZ, or minus, minus a half uh, DP, DZ. Minus a half DP, DZ. Minus, minus. Minus D, P, D, C. Minus gamma equals zero. D, P, D, Z equals minus gamma. What does this mean? Uh, okay. As Z goes up, then gamma is negative. So it's negative D, P, D, Z. Okay, so box this guy in. Box this guy in. Let's think that's all we need. Yeah. Is that DZ over Z or DZ over 2? I don't know. Oh, so it's I think it's 2. Which one now? Oh, yeah. It's my 2 and my Z. <laughs> See my little bar, little bar right there? That means a Z. That, that's why you do this little bar like that. This guy's a 2. If there's a slash in the middle, that's just to differentiate a Z and a 2. Yeah, it's kind of hard sometimes. Okay. So that means pressure changes in the z direction. Yeah, you go down your swimming pool, and this is your pressure transducer on the top surface, 14.7. Pressure gets bigger and bigger and bigger as you go down. Pressure does not vary in horizontal planes, only in vertical, the vertical direction. Okay, so those are our rules about pressure. Most of them are pretty, we, we, have, a, we have a good intuition for that. All right, so let's see. This is a reservoir example. Okay, here's a reservoir containing some fluids. Over here, 
this part, there's a fluid up here, has a weight density, gamma 2. And this fluid over here goes up to here. This is gamma 1. Let's see, now that middle one there has to have something else. The middle one looks like this. Okay. Just so we know what this means right here, I'm going to show you this. Here's the container. Fill with a fluid, let's just say water, for instance. Those little lines mean there's a fluid in that thing. It's just a, otherwise, it looks like that and it's not so clear. This is not too clear. This is real clear. That means this is the top of the liquid. That's the top of the liquid. It's called the free, now if it touches air up there, or a gas, it's called the free surface. Well, sometimes we put a little thing like this on there. We can even label it FS. Normally we don't do that, we could. FS would mean free surface. Free surface is where the liquid touches the gas, water touches air. Okay. So if you see something like those little lines like that, that's what they mean, is to help you see the picture better. Okay. So I'm going to take some points in here. And I'm going to look at the pressure at point A. Let's see where point A is. I'm going to change my picture. Sorry, you might hope you get a big eraser. Okay, let's see where A is. I didn't quite put A where it's supposed to be. There we go. There, down to there. Okay. This is point A. This is point B. This is point C. This is point D. This is point E. They all lie along the same horizontal line. I'll draw a dash line for it. Okay. Now, correct. Now here's the rule again. There is the rules. Pressure does not vary in a horizontal plane in a still fluid. A to B is on a horizontal plane. Yes, PA equals PB. Point C in a horizontal plane equals P, C. You may think it's a horizontal plane, P, D. You may think it's a horizontal plane, P, E, but you're wrong. No, no. You have to get the rule down right. The rule says the pressure does not vary in a horizontal plane as long as it's a continuous fluid. A continuous fluid, which means I can take my finger and go from point A to point B, and if I never leave that fluid, that's a continuous fluid. A B. Yes, it is. I can take my finger and go from B to C in the same fluid. Yes, it's equal. Continuous fluid. Here it comes. Take my finger. C to uh oh D. I change fluids. Nope, 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 nope. Rule doesn't work anymore. I go from C to E. Uh oh, I cross that barrier. I crossed a barrier. Not the same fluid, maybe. I don't know why I put that in there. Let's just call it um, yeah, let's just call it M. Yeah, one, two, three. Different fluid.
Okay, so be careful. Don't, don't misuse the rule. It must be the same. Here's the two words. It must be a continuous and the same fluid. Continuous and the same fluid. Okay, uh, let's see where else I took. Okay, I took one down here then. J. Let me see. Yeah. I'm just call. I call this J. I. H. G. F. So A B C D E F G H I J. Okay. Draw the horizontal line. P J. Equal P I, same fluid, continuous. Equal P H, same fluid, continuous. Equal P G, same fluid, continuous. Uh oh, change the fluid. First of all, it's not continuous, and it's not the, it's not the thing. So P F, not equal P F. Okay, so we'll use that many many times in the future in this class. Okay. You know, before I do this next thing, I you can probably do it with your unit conversion on your phone or your uh, laptop or whatever. But I'm going to put them on the board here for you. Our book doesn't give them this way. It's a good way to do it. So th these are conversion factors in uh, pressure. I'll put it over here. kPa, 14.7 PSIA, 760 millimeters mercury, 30 inches of mercury. PSI is the same as 30 inches of water. Uh, 30 inches of mercury. You've heard him at night on, on the newscast that the, the barometric pressure is 30.02 and rising. So they speak that language. A lot of times we speak the PSI language. Pressure of air in my tire is 35 PSI. If you're in HVAC ducts up there, probably the pressure is so many inches of water. Every different component of engineering has their own favorite expression for pressure drop. The people over in science, what do they use? You got an idea? It's bars a lot of times. Bars, okay. I didn't put, we don't use that too much. To find, to find but yeah, yes, yeah. All those things are equal. Whether the fluid is water, you can express a pressure in your tire. You can express a pressure in your tire in feet of water. The guy says. You know, there's no water in my tire. I'm sorry, there's air in that tire. I know, I know, but I can talk about the pressure in that tire in feet of water, or I can talk about the pressure of the air in the HVAC duct in, in millimeters of mercury. The guy says, oh, there's mercury in those ducts up there going down on our heads. No, 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 you don't understand. I'm speaking the language of mercury as pressure. So you don't have to express what's in that, in that duct up there in terms of PSI, it could be feet of water, millimeters of mercury, whatever it might be. They're all equivalent. Okay, okay so that's how we tackle that. Now, that's the first half of chapter two. Professor? Yes? If gamma three was uh, gamma one? Yeah, let's put it here just for fun, okay? Yeah, it's, it's the same as that guy over there because here to here, in the fluid gamma one is the same as here's your gamma one. But see that it's probably best. I, I was just showing here, if you put a barrier there, then then it, it changes things. Okay. Well, what could happen here? Here I'll, I'll change it for you, okay? Let's do it this way. Leave, leave it gamma one. Okay. 
Okay, is that the same now? Here's a pressure swimming pool, two feet down, the same as five feet down. No. <clears throat> Is it the same fluid? Yes, it is. Now here comes it. Here it comes. Is it continuous? Take your finger. A. Uh oh. No, 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 no. Two things. Is it continuous? Is it the same fluid? That's how you do it. Okay. Good point. Thank you. Yeah. But saying that if the two, uh, what FS free surface. Say again, over. If the two free surfaces oh, yeah, on yeah. either end were the same. Yes. 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 Oh. yes. That's why my first picture wasn't quite a good one for you. Okay, let's take a look then at uh, how we measure pressure. We, we know ourselves how we do it sometimes because everybody measures pressure in their tires or knows how to measure pressure in your tires. But let's get back to the real basic of how you measure pressure. One way to measure pressure, and these are pretty much we'll consider uh, a pipe here. Okay, this is going to be uh, number one. So let's just say we would have uh, maybe some tube like this. The water can be either stationary or moving. And there's a glass or a plastic tube. Now it could be, it's a, it's a clear tube. It might be glass, it might be plastic. We attach it to the pipe, we drill a hole in the pipe, stick the plastic tube in there. Uh, the fluid is gallon. Uh, the pressure in the pipe, for sure, be. But let's just take an example of the water, because that's the simplest one to take. Here's the water in this pipe. It might be standing still. I don't know. It says a certain pressure. Let's say the pressure is 20 PSIG. 20 PSIG with respect to the local atmospheric pressure. If you punch a hole in that pipe, if you cross in your sprinkler pipe sometime, go out there and drill a hole while the water's on up there, see what happens. Oh, it shoots out of there. Well, attach a clear plastic tube to it. Will, will the water rise up to infinity? I don't think so. It will probably rise up a certain distance and stop. Why should it keep going to infinity? So what happens is the water rises up to something like that. Oh, I just measured the pressure. And this distance from here to this reservoir or pipe center line we call H. This guy is called a piezometric tube. Or a piezometer. We have a couple, three of these in our fluids hydraulics lab. So they're out there. They've got water in them. Water in two and mercury in the third, but water in two of them, yeah. Uh, pretty simple way to measure pressure. Yeah. Uh, let's just see. I've got my little note. Oh, yeah. Let's say the pressure in there is 30 psi. Not a very big number. If you go through these conversion factors over here, here, 30 PSI, double that number. That's 30, double. How high would the water rise in the tube? How about seven stories tall? Seven stories tall, 70 feet, 68 feet. Is that practical? Can it close that? No, oh my gosh, no. You tell the guy, now read this pressure gauge. Go up to the eighth floor and look at the tube up there. <laughs> Give me a break, the guy says. How about putting a, you know, a, 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 a typical pressure gauge on it? So yeah, it can be done. Is it practical? Not all the time. In our fluids lab, luckily, 
the pressure goes up to about 700 millimeters, 0.7 meters. So that's okay. But for high pressures, no. Uh -uh. So what do we do then? Well, somebody figured it out. What we do then, we'll put it on the bottom, I think. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. So here's the pipe again. Okay, drill the hole in it. Now we attach what we call a U-tube manometer. They're in our fluid lab, hydraulics lab. It's in the shape of, guess what, a U-tube. Glass or plastic, clear, you can read it, you can see it. This is a fluid gamma one. A heavier fluid, bigger gamma, is put in here. So the heavier fluid is put in here. This fluid is gamma two. Okay. This difference is our reading delta H. This distance from here to here is H one. Note, gamma 2 must be greater than gamma 1. The heavier liquid drops down into the U2 and under. All right, we're measuring 30 PSI. That water rises up 38 feet from this pipe. We're measuring 30 PSI over here. How high is that going to rise? Well, we can figure it out. Start up here at the center line. Uh, the center line, the pressure is P at the center line. We're going to work our way around the manometer until we get to the end, the open end, which is at P atmospheric. Open end is at P atmospheric. Go down. How far down? H1. What's the fluid? Gamma 1. So, to go down, the pressure goes up. If we go down, the pressure goes up. Plus H1 gamma, which came from our dp dz equal minus gamma. Okay, that gets us right here. That's the pressure right at that black dot. Over here. Here I am at that black dot. Right there, right there. Here I go. Right there, right there. The same elevation? The same elevation? Is it is it the same fluid? Yes, it is. Gamma 2. So same fluid. Is it continuous? Yes, it is. Take my finger. Yep. So the pressure at those two black dots are the same. There's the picture over here. We did the proof. Pressure does not vary on horizontal planes as long as the fluid is continuous and the same. Okay, stop. Okay. Now that, that is the pressure right here. Now what do we do? We go up. If you go up, the pressure goes down. Minus sign. How far up did you go? Delta H. What's the fluid? Gamma 2. And then, where do I end up right there? Well, right there, I end up with the atmospheric pressure, which I'm going to call zero gauge. Pressure there is equal to zero. What do you want to solve for? Pressure at the center line. Okay? Pressure at the center line. You want the pressure. So our pressure at the center line.
is equal to gamma of the fluid, gamma 2, delta H, minus gamma of what's in the pipe, H1. U2 manometer, way to measure pressure. There's a ton of them in use, a ton of them in use. And typically, if this is water, what you put in here would be mercury, heavier, 13.6, heavier than water equal volume. If this is an air duct, like up there, HVAC duct, you typically put in water. If you had you know, a barometer on a wall, you might see them in, in, in science classes. A barometer on the wall, we have one in one of our labs, I think it might be the engine's lab or something. It's, it's got this little mercury well. And this upside down inverted tube in it. And it's got markings in millimeters. And you, and you read the pressure in the room by this uh, mercury manometer. And typically, if it's room pressure, it would be. 30 inches of mercury, which is not too good nowadays, but that's what it would be. What if you had water in that thing? What if you just took it made, made into a water monopoly on the wall? How high would it be? The water would go up 34 feet. So why do we have mercury monopolies on the wall? What's the distance? 30, 30 inches? I could read that with my eye. I don't need a step ladder. Why do you use this guy here? Because I don't want to go up seven flights to find what the pressure is. If I put mercury in here, if I put mercury in here, remember the, the, what we did? We doubled it. The pressure was 30. 30. How high was the water? 68 feet. How about that mercury right there? Oh, 30 times 2, 60 inches. Five feet tall. Right here. Right here. Oh, yeah. That's why we use other heavier fluids here. Use heavier fluids so you can read them in a laboratory environment. If this was air, let's say mercury, we, we, we forget about forget about this guy here. If it's air, if it's air, you know what gamma of water is? Gamma of mercury. Mercury, thirteen point six times that. 13.6 times that, gamma of air. Wow, wow, 0.073 pounds per cubic foot, wow. So if we see air in this manometer, this guy just about goes away. We don't worry about it typically, typically. Okay, so if there's air somewhere in there, we don't typically worry about it. Because it, it, it makes this number here go, I don't care what H1 is, that number goes close to zero. All right, let's do an example problem on the board right here. There's a ton of more sophisticated ways to do it. But this is called manometry, okay? Pressure measurement with manometry. Here's our example. Water, so gamma of water. I think I call that uh, gamma yeah, W, gamma of water. Let's put some dimension. Okay, water goes up to here, and then air is in here. Gamma air, gamma water is up to that point. Then down to here, this has to be a little higher. Down to here, 
this is, I think these dimensions might not be too accurate, but that ends there, and then it goes down to here at the center line of this. This is gamma water, and this is gamma of some so-called gauge fluid, gamma of GF, where GF stands for a gauge fluid. S is 3.0, SG is 3.0. So that gauge fluid has a um, specific weight three times that of water. Okay. Take a 30 minute break while Matt changes it up. Can you do it now? Are you okay? All right, good. Okay, and that goes up to, let's see where it goes, it goes up to here. And this is P atmosphere. Now this is, I'm making this rather complicated just to show you a more complicated example. And of course, we're trying to find the pressure, let's see that, given a number, but yeah, at point A. This is point A, the exact center. Okay, so we want, Again, I'm pointing. Now, there's there's other ways to solve these manometry problems, but I do it the way I like to do it. Some textbooks do it differently. That's fine. This is just the way I like to do it. Okay, so PA. So here's the rule again. We start where you want to find the pressure, and you follow the manometers around until you get to the atmosphere. I'm going to go up. I better put some numbers in here. Let's see these English numbers. Not yet, but they're going to be. Uh, one foot, four feet. All right, this guy is one foot. This one is four feet. Over here, this one is one foot. Okay, same thing. Yeah. Got it. That's all I need. Okay. P atmospheric, right. Air, water, okay. All right, uh, we go up in the water from A to where the water meets the air. How far up? Four plus one, five. In what fluid? Water. Five gamma W. Up. Minus, pressure goes down as you go up. Minus five gamma water. Now I have air. I I'm not going to ignore it. I said sometimes you can ignore it over here, but I'm not going to ignore it right now. So, now first of all, the pressure of the air at that point is the same as the pressure of the air at that point. Why? Horizontal plane, continuous fluid, same fluid. Okay, now I know the pressure right here, my finger. That's the pressure where my finger is. Now I go down. As I go down, the pressure goes up. Positive sign. How far did I go down? Four feet. In what fluid? Air. It gets me down to there now. Now I go down to where, this is water now. Now I go down to where water changes into the gauge fluid. Always go to where there's a change in the fluid. Start up here, water, go to down here, end of water, start up gauge fluid. Okay, the pressure down here. I go down, the pressure goes up. How far down did I go? One foot. What was the fluid? Water. Okay. Now I'm down here. Now I say, you know what? If I go across horizontally, <coughs> the pressure, it's the same. Is it the same fluid? Yes, the gauge fluid. Is it continuous? 
Yes, it's continuous. Is it horizontal? Yes, it's horizontal. Conclusion, these two pressures are the same. So now this pressure right here is right there. Now what do I do to get out of this tube? I go up. If I go up, the pressure goes down. Minus sign, how far up? One foot. In what fluid? Gauge fluid. When I get to the top, at this point right here, what's the pressure? Atmospheric, zero. Okay, that's called the manometer equation. That's the manometer equation. There's other ways to do it. Other, other textbooks, other instructors teach different ways. That's fine. The answer is always going to be the same, though. Okay, let's do PA then. So PA equal. Let's, um, let's get four to me. That's not a four. It's not a four. Sorry about that. This is a one. And that's a two right there then. Okay. Yeah. Got the other way. Okay. So we've got uh, two, uh, our gamma water. And the gamma one one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Right up. And then we've got our, that's a minus, uh, that's a plus line, sorry. Minus a uh, one times gamma air. Uh, and then we have minus one times gamma water. And then we have plus one times gamma gauge fluid. That's equal. Okay. Uh, two times gamma of uh, well, two gamma water minus gamma water. One gamma water. Uh, plus gamma air, plus gamma gauge fluid. Don't no, mind it. Oh, thanks, 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 thanks. thanks. And uh, that guy, he has a plus sign there. He's a minus sign there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, equal. Uh, specific gravity. Uh, of water plus specific gravity of the uh, gauge fluid, SG gauge fluid. Neglect, air, uh, multiplied by gamma of uh, water. Okay. Gamma water at uh, Four degrees C, you know. Okay. Specific gravity of our water is one. Specific gravity of the gauge fluid given three times gamma of water sixty two point four is two hundred fifty psi g psf g pardon me psf. Everything's in feet. Equivalent to 1.733 PSI. So it's one PSI, it's 1.733. Where? Gauge. 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 Okay, okay. This is what I mean by gauge. I didn't put an A there, not PSIA. Look at I ended up. What did I say the pressure was there? Zero. Zero. Try, try, try. Zero gauge pressure. Zero gauge pressure. What's the absolute pressure right here? 14.7, right? Did I put 14.7? If I put 14.7 here, guess what I'll get? PSIA for an answer. I, it's your choice. But if the problem is most people speak the PSIG language. What's the pressure here in your top? 14, uh, 30 point, 35 pounds of PSI. A or G? G. We all speak pressure gauge, G language. A lot of science people speak the absolute pressure because that's a science process typically. 
Anyway, that zero goes with zero gauge pressure right here. So if you want to do it to make, to make sure about it, just put That way you'll know what you're doing. That, that is clear, of course. Okay, now we are going to check to see if that's good to the left. Well, I guess I did that for you already anyway, didn't I? Yes, yeah, gamma of water plus 62.4, 186, 0 0.073. Now, look at those numbers. <laughs> Do you think you can neglect the air? Of course you can. Let's be serious here. Is there sometimes you might not be able to? Yeah. Yeah. You, but you know, you better prove it to yourself first that you can before you just say, oh, I always neglect the air. You're going to be wrong sometimes. But if you're talking about water and mercury or even oil, you're going to neglect gamma of the air. It's, it's most, less than negligible. Just not even point one, not even a tenth. Look at those guys there. 240 compared to 0 0.073. <laughs> negligible. Okay. By the way, do they give gamma of air in the front of the book? Let's check and see. Yeah, they do. At uh, 59 degrees standard temperature, 0 0.0765. So I'm off of the pad, but that's a, that's a typical number. Okay. Um, don't forget you can use the, the, you can change that density. If you know density, you can find gamma by using G. So you can do that calculation yourself if you want to. Okay. Now that's called manometry. Okay. How you work with manometers. Clear plas plastic or glass tubes that contain different fluids that help you read the pressure in a reservoir or a pipe. Okay, we finished half of chapter two. We're going to start the rest of chapter two next time. So we'll see you then on this Monday. Homework due Monday. Homework due today. Thank you.